Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Gracie Planetarium. This is a portion of the Carnegie Science Center. My name is Dr. Rigelis Constellanicus, and I'm going to be your star pilot today for our show, Stars Over Pittsburgh. In this traditional planetarium show, I'll take some time to show you some of the stars, planets, and constellations currently visible in our nighttime sky. My hope is that you learn a thing or two and are able to step outside yourself and see some of the wonderful objects that I'm about to show you. But before we get started, I have just a few brief housekeeping reminders to share with you. First off, if you have a cell phone with you, please take a moment to put that on silent and keep it away for the remainder of the show. Our dome is highly reflective, so if you do take out your phone during the show, you'll end up blinding everyone in the entire room. Secondly, if at any point you need to leave during the show, you may do so by exiting through the set of double doors behind me. However, be advised that if you do leave the planetarium, you will not be able to re-enter. And finally, please refrain from eating or drinking during the show. That being said, I think we can finally begin. Please turn your lights down and join me over Pittsburgh. In order to take a look at the stars, we'll need to take a step outside of our planetarium walls and visit a spot that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Right now, we're up on Mount Washington and have an amazing view of the city. Now, Mount Washington is a great place to go and look at Pittsburgh, but it's a lousy place to go look at the stars. The reason for that is because of something called light pollution. What happens is that the light from our cities actually reflects off our own atmosphere and makes it very hard to see stars if you are downtown. In addition to that, Pittsburgh is actually the fourth cloudiest city in the United States. So between the light pollution and the cloud coverage, downtown Pittsburgh is a pretty bad spot to stargaze. If you really want to see some stars, take a trip outside the city, and when you do, your view of the stars may look more like this. There. Now we have a much better view of the nighttime sky. Right now, we are looking what our own nighttime sky would look like about 10 p.m. this evening. So in order to begin our star journey, let's go ahead and look for a very familiar shape that I'm sure many of us recognize. If we connect stars together, we should be able to see the shape of a spoon. Does anybody know what this is called? Well done. This group of stars makes up the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is a great thing for us to find in the nighttime sky. The stars are bright, it's easy to see, and we can actually use the Big Dipper to help us find some other wonderful things. If you look at these two stars on the right side of the Big Dipper, which they seem like to call out our pointer stars, we can actually use them to find a very important star in the nighttime sky. Just use these two pointer stars and draw an imaginary line until we come to the star right here called Polaris. Very good. So you can see it connects from here to up there. This star that we just found is called Polaris, but a more common name for that is the North Star. That's right, we just found the North Star. All we have to do is look at our two pointer stars from the Big Dipper and follow our imaginary line up to Polaris. Now Polaris is a very important star. Most people think that the North Star is the brightest, but believe it or not, that's just a myth. If you look at Polaris and compare it to other stars, you'll see that it's not that bright. As you can see, there are other stars in the sky that are brighter. I'll mention the real reason that Polaris is important in a few minutes, but for right now, let's focus on some of the stars around it. So if the North Star is right in front of us, which direction do you think we're stating? Face it. That's right. We are currently facing North. So that means everything I'm showing you right now can be found in the northern sky. So now that we know which way we are facing, let's continue our star journey together. You might notice that Polaris is near a few other stars that when connected make another familiar shape. We have ourselves a Big Dipper, so that means we also need to have the Little Dipper. Very good. The Little Dipper is nowhere near as bright as the Big Dipper, but it's still a fun shape for us to find. Oh, and I suppose that I should explain something here too. I've been calling the Big and Little Dipper shapes and not constellations because technically they aren't. These are technically something called asterisms, which is just a fancy term for shapes you can make by connecting stars. Anybody can make an asterism out of anything they want. But in order to be considered a constellation, an international group of astronomers have to all agree on a name and shape. Different people in different parts of the world have given the Big Dipper a variety of names, so that's why it's only an asterism. But the Big and Little Dippers are part of larger constellations called Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, which is Latin 
for Big Bear and Little Bear. Now, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor are just the first group of friends that we'll visit tonight. If we look in between the bears, we should be able to see a group of stars that snake around and make a unique shape. When we connect these stars together, we can see our fierce-looking friend, Draco the Dragon, for all of my Harry Potter fans out there. And not too far away from Draco, we can see two more interesting shapes in the sky. If we look over here, we can see a group of stars that look like an M or a W, or maybe even a 3. This happens to be Cassiopeia, who is the queen of our nighttime sky. And if we have a queen of the nighttime sky, this means we also have a king, right? So not too far from the queen, we can see Cepheus, the king of the nighttime sky. Cepheus is easy to find because he's near Cassiopeia, and he looks sort of like a house, or maybe home plate on a baseball field. Now, these five constellations that I showed you are actually very important. These constellations are called the circumpolar constellations. The real reason they are called circumpolar is because they go in a circle around Polaris, our pole star. Earlier in the show, I explained that the North Star is important, but not because it's bright. The real reason that the North Star is important is because it's the only star that never moves. It's always going to stay in this exact same place and will always be pointing north. Imagine spinning a basketball on your finger. The rest of the ball will spin but your finger will stay in the exact same point. That's sort of what the North Star does. Our constellations, much like the sun, will rise in the east and set in the west as the night goes on. Constellations that were visible at one point in the evening will no longer be seen after a certain time frame. But these constellations will keep going in a circle around Polaris and will never disappear. This means that you can see them all night long and all year long too. Now that we've seen some pretty interesting constellations so far in the northern sky, let's look south for a few more. However, instead of making you all turn your heads for the rest of the show, I can just click a button right here to adjust the dome so that we'll be facing south. If you easily get motion sickness, then please look away for just a moment while I change our position. Okay, folks, we are now in the south. Our northern friends are behind us, but there are still a lot of wonderful things we can see over here. Let's start off by looking at this group of stars right in front of us that sort of looks like a hook shape or a backwards question mark. This group of stars is called Leo the Lion. Leo has some very interesting friends nearby. If we look to the right of Leo, we can see a group of stars that looks like a letter Y. That happens to be our very crabby friend, Cancer the Crab. To find our next constellation, let's go ahead and backtrack a bit. If we look at the Big Dipper again, we can use it to find another friend in the nighttime sky. This time, instead of using the pointer stars, we will use the tail of the Big Dipper and arc to Arcturus, which is the brightest star of our herdsman Bootes. You may also notice a U shape right next to Bootes. This happens to be Corona Borealis, or the Northern Crown. So you can see Bootes, our herdsman, right here. And then you can see the northern crown right here. Remember how we arced to Arcturus? Next, we will speed on to Spica in order to find our next constellation. Right there, from the Big Dipper down to Arcturus, down to Spica. Spica is a very bright star in the southern sky that is surrounded by some other bright stars. When you connect them together, you'll be able to see a box with some arms and legs sticking out of it. This group of stars is actually Virgo the Maiden. Well guys, we've looked at a lot of really interesting constellations today. As a matter of fact, there are 88 constellations in total, some of which we can only see at certain points of the year. So take a moment and find your favorite constellations or certain constellations that we looked at today. Here's a lot of the ones that we looked at today, right over here. No matter where you go, though, remember, you'll always have 88 friends looking down on you, no matter what. And that's the end of our show today, folks. I really hope you enjoyed yourself. Please take a moment to check around your seat to make sure you didn't lose anything. If you have any questions about the stars or astronomy, feel free to stop back here and discuss them with me. But if you're good to go ahead on to those double doors that are being opened for you now, have a wonderful rest of your day here at the Gracie Planetarium, compliments of the Carnegie Science Center. I was Dr. Rigelis Constellationis, and thank you for listening. Hey guys, what is up? It is Mr. Gracie. Thanks again for listening to my friend, Dr. Professor Rigelis Constellationis. Uh, he's a very good authority on it. Um, this this 
presentation came friend, uh, compliments of one of my friends who used to work at the Carnegie Science Center. He worked at the planetarium, so I'd like to give him a shout out. We appreciate it. And thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us on this journey of stars over Pittsburgh. Have a great day. Oh, before I forget, definitely go outside and see if you can see some of these, especially those living out farther away from the city. Maybe you can see a little bit better without the air pollution. So go out and see if you can recognize some of these constellations and see what you can find. Thanks. Bye-bye.